So this method is called as reverse sourcing method. So what is this reverse sourcing method? As the word says, you are doing going to do something different from the conventional method, from the conventional uh, approach. So when I say reverse sourcing method, so as the word says, instead of just thinking about sales, 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 you are going to put yourself in your customer shoes. That is thinking like an importer. That solves a lot of problems. So you reverse the approach. You start thinking, if someone has to buy your product, how do they do it? When you get the answer for this one question, then your business growth is clear for you. So that's why the first thing is your thought process. You start thinking like an importer and as an importer, how would I, how a importer do to buy this product? Another major thing is that your buyer or you are coming together for mutual benefit. Your product, you are supplying to your buyer with that product, he's making money and his business is growing. So it is a mutual exchange of opportunities, mutual exchange of benefits. So these are the two thought process you should have. So the more your buyer's business grow, the more your business grow. And you can find many buyers like that. And if you are able to understand this, you are always one step ahead of your competitors who is just thinking to make sales, sales, sales. Okay. So we are coming into the stage one. When we do this, the stage one is the, we have to know where the market is. So as I told you in the conventional method, exporters look for markets which are importing these products. So what they would do or what you would have done before this, you would have done a Google research or some research and saw that there are top 10 countries which has the potential for your product. Yes, but in the market, there are four levels of markets that are called as tapped, untapped, saturated and unsaturated markets. So let's say what are these saturated, unsaturated, tapped and untapped markets. Saturated means the market having more demand and supply. It's very simple. There is a demand and you have a product to supply. So in terms of demand and supply only the market functions. So the saturated market is that there is a demand, but there is an oversupply. When there is an oversupply, the buyer will naturally having so many choices would ask for credit payment. And in other cases, Indians have also made the markets worse because they want to get the orders. They were offering credit payments and now it has become being a worst case scenario or the nightmare for many of the exporters because it's like catching the tiger's tail or, or because there is no way to escape from it. But there is a next market called as unsaturated market. So in this unsaturated market, there is a demand, but the supply is more needed because it, it has not gone. Uh, it, the supply is always needed. That market is called as unsaturated market. And then there is a market called tapped market. This tapped market means to meet the demand and supply, you have to know how the demand is happening, right? Why there is a demand. This one will answer why there is a demand. Like you have to know the factors behind it and the culture of that industry. What is bringing the demand for this product in that market or that industry? If you are aware, then that is called a staffed market. So Indians are much aware of what's happening in US or UAE or Europe because they are all living there and this becomes a tapped market for them. But what about Kazakhstan? What about Georgia? What about uh, Lesotho? Right? These are also markets. There are also people living there. And we are no one to decide whether they can buy or not buy. Because once you know there is a demand, once you are able to identify demand, you don't have to even create the demand. You identify the demand and you are know whom to supply these products. Then that understanding the why the demand is happening is called tapped. Then there are next factor, which is called as untapped. Untapped market is that you do not know why there is a demand for your product in that market and what is driving the demand for it. So as an exporter, the first thing is to learn 
the pro market which are saturated, markets which are, which are unsaturated, and what is the tapped and untapped prod market for your product. This is the stage one. So how to know this? The tools which we use in reverse sourcing method is a trade statistics tools because you have to know the export trend. If you know the export trend, because if the export is going on average, both on quantity and value. Quantity means, say for example, uh, Bangladesh is buying uh, 100 million ton yarns. I'm just giving you an example, okay? Uh, in year 2019 and 2020, if they are buying 120 million tons of yarn, then what is happening for the quantity? One year 100 million ton and second year 120 million tons. Because the major economy driver for Bangladesh is garment industry. Third year, what happens is instead of buying 120 million tons, the country's total import is 110 million tons. What has happened? We think it has reduced. Now let me give you another example, okay? In the year, first year, Bangladesh has brought 100 million tons worth of yarn for $1 billion. I'm just giving a random number to keep it easier for you to understand, okay? $1 billion. Second year, they are buying 100 million so 120 million tons of yarn for $1 billion. Is it a growth or is it a saturation? Very good, saturated because the quantity has increased, but the money value has not increased. Now the third year, 110 tons for $1.5 billion. Third year, they are buying 110 million tons. So the third year growth, so when we are considering the trend, we have to consider both the quantity and the money paid. But what happens if you see in the newspaper, you would see the growth of this product has increased 17 percentage, but they consider only the value, not the quantity, but you have to compare the both. Now, second factor, now you have understood that. Now, tapped and untapped. For the tapped mark, for the example, the Bangladesh, uh, Government has announced a scheme, uh, current supply, free current supply to the garment industries. Okay. Now, this will increase the manufacturing activity or reduce the manufacturing activity in the market. So, this is the reason for TAP. That is, you know why there is a demand for it. And the next year, the government is saying, we are thinking of, we are thinking of increasing the labor cost, the, the minimum wages paid for the garment manufacturing. Do you think this will increase or reduce the opportunity for the garment manufacturing units? Here, we don't have a clear idea, increase or decrease, because this information is cannot be verified, right? Think about a country like Bangladesh or India. The government is announcing, increase the wages for your labor. This should be the, does every industry practice it? We are not sure. We cannot verify that factor. This is called as untapped, okay? You cannot verify, you are not sure whether this is true or not. Only if you speak to the manufacturer and the manufacturer says, yes, they've increased the labor cost, but the government is also giving incentive. They are also giving the incentive, right? Don't worry where to find these details. There are two tools to be used in this case, which is called as trade statistics tools. Another one is market access tools. This will give the information about the market. Okay, these tools are all free tools. So in this stage one, once based on this, can you make an informed decision which market to go, yes or no? So net, this is the stage one. So you have to select the market based on business practice and the what's happening in the business. If you want to export your product to a country, you have to know how much quantity the country is importing for how much money. And also you have to know 
why this country is importing only these three questions you have to answer but very simple thing you have to know quantity value and the reason for buying now i'm going to the stage 2 this is called as market segment what is this market segment there are different type of buyers there are nine type of buyers this is the stage 2 this is the major area where people think how to find buyers so the first thing is there are nine type of buyers i'll give you some example this is my very interesting scenario i just want you to think this scenario okay you are a family going in a car you want to fill petrol in a fuel station one in the car want to have ice cream where will you buy the ice cream very good near a petrol pump it will be a small shop okay where there is a ice cream parlor or the truck or that uh, freezer box now scenario 2 your whole family is going for a shopping festival shopping you are going for a mall going to a mall you are doing a festival shopping you are so happy with the purchase now you want to have ice cream where will you have the ice cream in the mall correct you will go to a ice cream parlor the parlor or the ice cream or brand and you will buy and enjoy it very nice now you are in a very busy day you want to have a quick lunch so you are going to a, a nearby restaurant and then the restaurant you have a good meal if you are someone like me after a meal i want to have ice cream where will you have the ice cream from same hotel same restaurant very good now the last scenario it's a very good sunny or a lovely weather sunny or rainy depending upon which weather you prefer and all your loved ones are at your home and you all decide to watch your favorite movie and when you are watching a favorite movie you have all the snacks now you want to have ice creams of your own favorite ice creams what would you do order online very simple right so the people are same the product is same but depending upon the situation depending upon where you are the product you are buying the mode of buying is different am i right or not this is the same thing that's happening in the international market also there will be a wholesale importer who likes to buy the product in whole big packages then there are buyers who want it in re retail packages then there are manufacturers who want your product for as a raw material to make something out of it and there will be a luxury store customization would be needed and there will be industries where technical strength is needed so there are different type of buyers in the international market how do you find these buyers the current technology whichever you have does it give this differentiations so you can pick up your type of buyer based on your strength so you as an exporter if you have a capabilities to supply in bulk then you want someone who wants to buy in bulk but if your capacity is to do a very good packaging in small packages then your buyer is a retailer but if you have a raw materials you want to supply to a manufacturer then manufacturer so depending upon your capacity you can fix and the good news is there are hundreds and thousands of such buyers in the world why exporters are struggling because they do not know who is their right buyers or sometimes they are doing the selling to the approach to the wrong people that's why you send so many emails because it should be appealing to them it should match right and then so there are six tools at this stage which are called as data scraping tools market intelligence tools yes you can find the details of this buyers what details these tools will give you company name contact name designation name and the contact email address is that more than enough this is more than enough and at this stage there is a sales channel where you can meet your importers almost on everyday base almost on everyday base and that's free of cost again the tools differ there are six tools for different sectors and you have to identify who is the right type of buyer for you and the tool will give you the details of the company name contact person's name their designation and this is free this tools are free okay 
once you have now you have your bias data whatever tools i'm talking about all these tools are free not even single and we have tested and tried these tools enough using in our business using uh, our clients are using it and the cost of marketing cost is almost negligible almost negligible okay why i'm saying negligible because you still have internet bill to pay you also have manpower to do it if you're doing it by yourself or your team you still have manpower but that's a good expense to have i believe okay now you have you know which markets to go now you know who are the buyers then the third thing is the obstacle stage 3 what are these obstacles now in export business the obstacles are only one thing which is called as customs and regulations now let me give you an example this is my most favorite example and very simple to understand as well so there is an exporter this is a real case scenario there are thousands of real case scenarios like this there are there is a mango exporter who export who got advance payment from japan market he followed all the procedures okay he put all the procedures so in, but when he exported the container to japan the whole product got detained the whole product got detained in the customs for one simple reasons he got the advance payment his buyer paid the advance payment he followed all the procedure to ensure the product quality before packaging because of one reason his whole thing got cancelled because of the package in customs there are only two things you have to be aware of one is the packaging another one is quality certificate he had the quality certificate but the packaging the holes will be there right if you have seen the fruit boxes the packages even in the local markets the hole was 0.01 mm less and the customs detained the hole because this product has traveled from india to japan because the holes are not up to the dimensions mentioned in the customs this would be a life threatening to take into the market is it shocking or is it this is how the international market operates customs regulations are very much important and now his buyer also can't help right the buyer also lost the exporter also lost so at this stage you have to ensure you connect with your buyer to know what are the packaging and the certification regulations for his customs the more you ask relevant question to your buyers the buyers trust you more the biggest mistakes indian exporters do is not asking any questions to their importers thinking that the importer will think oh maybe he do not know no it's not relations and the only the two areas you have to focus one is the packaging one is the the quality certificate the quality certificate is it to ensure that you have produced in a proper way that this product is not hazard to that industry hazard to the environment so only these two obstacles very simple things but still people fail because of not knowing how to ensure because in greediness or in hurry two things are killing the indian businesses one is greediness another one is hurriness have proper approach so because of this people are losing their business people are losing the markets that's how majority of the reasons indians have lost the markets because of these two reasons but you don't have to because at this stage you have to connect with the chas your export promotion council and there is also a tool called as market access tool because the market access tool will give you the both the reasons and the certifications required so you you will learn what is ta- reasons for this import and also what are the customs regulations for it and then the last one is stage 4 now let me give you two scenario and you decide who has the better opportunity in the export business okay one is let's keep the same mango export from india to japan exporter a exporter b exporter a is writing a mail like this hello importer we are the processors uh, we are the exporters of mangoes from india we are in india for law, uh, we are exporting this for 20 years we are the leading manufacturers this is my history this is my geography and this is the product catalog and i'm looking for your export order or requirements okay this is exporter a writing the email 
exporter B is writing the email. Hi, I'm exporting the mangoes in 20 tons or every month to Japan, properly vapor heated, packaged with 0, 0.0, I mean, whatever the dimensions. And I have these, these quality certifications. On basis of order confirmation, I can dispatch one container of mango in next three weeks. But before we go into the details of the orders, we can connect on a Zoom call to know, get introduced about each other. And regards, this is my email address. This is my LinkedIn profile. This is my WhatsApp number. It's very obvious, right? Very obvious. You have to be very particular. How many of you see that the exporters, yay, mistake is what the normal mistakes. Hey, don't worry, okay, everyone come across this path. Why I'm able to present it? Because for years and years we have tested and we have made this method so simple for the exporters because no exporter should suffer in India because of lack of knowledge, lack of exposure, lack of understanding. Now, do you think the exporter will have any challenges in giving advance payment at this 50 percentage? Because the B is not even making sales call. The B is saying, let's explore if we can work together. This is called as networking skills and it's easy to learn. Now, can you see in this method, you could see the exporter, you could see market and you can see the technology. Can you see all the three in this method? Now you might think, okay, maybe you are in different experiences. Your age could be a factor or you're someone new. Doesn't matter whether you are someone who has difficulties in learning or you're someone starting new, this method works for you. This is the example why these two people look at them. You might resonate with one of them, but these are the free tools. This is easy to understand, easy. Me as a mentor, making things easier for you and simplified to handhold you, okay? I can give thousands of testimonials but it all matters with you. Can you be successful? What do you need? You need information, you need skills, you need tools. Because to find the genuine bias, that's the matters. Genuine for exporting your product and it, you should enjoy it. The most thing is your business should be enjoyable. Great. And the only action, action takers can win. Now, do you want this method for your business? Do you want, do you, do you want to grab this opportunity that a mentor to help you out in your business? 